Welcome to Edgy Mystery. Do you want to know how to express yourself more creatively and vividly in English? If yes, then you'll want to stay tuned for this video. I'm dead serious. Mastering a foreign language, as with any task, is a process. But often what people think passes for fluency is a sufficient comprehension of grammar rules, an abundant vocabulary, and clear pronunciation that not only allows speakers to be well understood in the language they've been learning, but perhaps even convincing enough for them to pass for a native speaker. While this is all well and good, and I would never dismiss the value of accomplishing the holy trinity of language learning, it's worth keeping in mind that those three aspects only make up the foundation of linguistic comprehension. Once a student has accomplished this, it's time to graduate and move on to more challenging endeavors, and this is where something called nuance becomes the focus of one's advancement. These subtle details and understandings of a foreign language are what separate the kids from the grown-ups, as the saying goes, and this video is going to help you secure a seat at the grown-ups table. What's up, my amazing Anglophiles? I'm Courtney, and today we're going to help level up your English with hyperboles. But what is a hyperbole? Put simply, it's an unmistakably exaggerated statement that is never meant to be taken literally, and instead is used for emphasis. Of course, we'll be discussing some of the most common ones so that you can start putting them to use and taking yourself one step closer to English mastery. Let's get started. Apologies in advance to any viewers who suffer from dentophobia, but this is a channel dedicated to grim subjects and applying them to the English language. Allegedly, the expression traces back to a time long before modern dentistry, when tooth extraction was both a difficult and excruciatingly painful process. This challenge was later applied to the task of extracting information from someone, more specifically, someone who was unwilling to open up and provide it. A person who's secretive and who withholds details or who keeps their mouth shut about certain things might be irritating to the person who's looking for answers from them. In these instances, they might say, getting them to talk about X, Y, Z is like pulling teeth. Did you have a nice flight, Johnny Tight Lips? I ain't saying nothing. I understand. How is your mother? Oh, hey, who says I have a mother? Very well. Let's do this thing. Johnny Tight Lips, can you see the shooter? I see a lot of things. You know, you could be a little more helpful. When someone has been through an unbearable ordeal, others might comment on that experience and describe it as a journey through hell. This is not to be confused with walking on sunshine, which is meant to describe a state or feeling of lightheartedness. I felt it might be prudent to point that out since, you know, well, hell and the sun are both hot and living on. Other expressions like this might be going through hell or such and such an experience was a living hell. And these are also used to emphasize or exaggerate the feelings of prolonged discomfort. Someone might say, he went through hell during his divorce, or there were moments when working two jobs while studying to get into medical school was a living hell. This expression describes situations that are intense and often filled with harsh criticism or conflict because it conjures up images of being caught in a battle. When arguments escalate between people, whether it's in a high school cafeteria, an office, a courtroom, or a place where politicians hold debates about legislations, such as the headquarters of parliament. They can become so heated or vicious that spectators will say it was an absolute bloodbath. You've probably noticed that the statement is similar to the example about going through hell. And if you noticed that, you would be correct. 
While these two hyperboles are indeed similar, this one is, believe it or not, a more subtle reference about going through discomfort and challenges. Referring to a task as torture means that it's grueling, or at least unpleasant, but still more manageable than hell. Someone might say, writing that exam was absolute torture, or training for an Ironman triathlon requires months, if not years, of sheer torture. So while it might not be as awful as going through hell, it is brutal nonetheless. This expression can be used in two particular contexts. In one, it refers to the task of reducing costs significantly in order to save as much money as possible, or to preserve the absolute bare minimum. One might say, if we're going to send our kids to university in the States, we'll have to cut our other expenses to the bone. In another context, this hyperbole is used to explain how much someone's words or deeds are hurtful. For example, his passive aggression and silent treatment were meant to cut me to the bone. Or, her criticism of his work cut him to the bone and he's still upset about it. My suggestion, use these expressions, but don't be these people. While this statement might seem more tame than the others, I personally find it to be the most morbid and the frequency of its use does not change that. The exaggeration is used to explain someone's state of feeling overwhelmed or even suffocated by the overwhelming volume of work that they have to do. When someone says this, an image of stacks of books and papers come to mind, or a screen with dozens of open tabs. The point is that the workload is extremely heavy and the person buried under it is desperate to finish it or to claw their way out. Sweet dreams. I'll wrap this up with an easy one that you've likely heard, but it's worth mentioning because of the frequency of its use. Anything that causes discomfort, whether it's physical, emotional, or psychological, will be accused of killing someone. How many times have you heard someone say, these shoes are killing me, or similarly, my feet are killing me? In instances of emotional distress, a person might say, my heart is broken and it's killing me. While psychological discomfort might be expressed with a phrase like, this heavy workload is killing me probably because it's causing exhaustion and leaving no time for a life outside of it. So, to wrap up this week's video, I want to reiterate that using hyperboles is worth your while because it adds a touch of drama and sometimes even a bit of intrigue to your conversation skills. By using them, you're demonstrating a level of confidence and familiarity with English that's limited to native speakers and EFL students who have reached a C2 level. Furthermore, Incorporating hyperboles into everyday conversations enhances conversational skills, making interactions more dynamic and memorable, and who doesn't want that? I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, stay curious.